Good morning all and great to be here for our first ever virtual EY Entrepreneur of the Year CEO Retreat. This is the 23rd year of our EOI programme. We have close to over 550 entrepreneurs and our alumni, employing a staggering 200,000 people and generating turnover of nearly 20 billion euro here in Ireland and abroad. Quite amazing. Our purpose here at EY is to build a better working world. So I'm hugely proud of the work we are doing with both governments here on our island, north and south. I see the event as a great showcase of the best and the brightest and energetic young entrepreneurs coming onto the scene and those that have made it mm -hmm. uh, significantly with good companies, good products, good solutions for the world. So it's, it's always invigorating uh, to, to touch base with entrepreneurs uh, and witness their continuing energy and innovation. about an ecosystem that you create between academia, government and the private sector, in other words, the entrepreneurs, um, so that we can all work together in a partnership approach. We talk a lot about uh, partnership in our management of COVID-19 at the moment, but partnership uh, is very key uh, in terms of growth because entrepreneurs aren't able to grow and aren't able to develop. Uh, if they don't have the support of academia, the universities, research and development, or indeed if they don't have the appropriate government policies and support in place as well. I only know one thing in life and that's to fight, right? And that's to take the challenge on and to find a solution. And there's always solutions. I mean, even COVID, you know, I mean, the human spirit is to find a vaccine, to find cures, to uh, use um, social health, i.e. by social distancing, sure, etc., sure. to fight this. So we just have to regroup, rebrand and, and uh, re-pivot, um, just re-everything actually, um, and uh, come back stronger, which I believe we can. More positive note, I think a couple of observations has simply been the resilience and the cooperation that we have seen. Resilience, what we've heard from international investors in Northern Ireland is that their experience in benchmarking their operations around uh, the world, that the resilience in, in, on the island has been much, much better uh, here than in other areas and also the cooperation. And it is interesting to see that exports from Ireland at the end of the first half uh, were up 8% on last year, driven by the medical device and the pharma industry. And then we are all so familiar with the devastation across the hospitality sector, the aviation sector and so on. So it's not one size fits all in terms of impact across the sector. In order to deliver this type of future that we want to see on the island and for our children and grandchildren, it's going to require some of the innovative and creative thinking that you bring to the table. It's going to require us to solve new problems, to find new ways of driving economic growth, qualifying that growth with what it means for those around us, for society and for the planet. And I think with that perspective and lens on the future, perhaps we can be a little bit more optimistic. After all, if we can see a long list of problems, the good news is that all problems need problem solvers. And if that's one thing I've learned from meeting so many of you over the years, is that that's what you're good at. You've created businesses to solve problems. I think in, in looking to the future, just to remember that 60% of global GDP growth in the next decade will come from Asia. So whilst we all live on this island, it's important from an investment perspective to think in a truly global context and it isn't as bad elsewhere potentially as it might sometimes feel locally. You know, using the EOI strap line of 2019, uh, being bold, being brave, stay invested and uh, the returns will come over time. Macroeconomic indicators tell us that uh, $2.9 trillion was the cost of global warming in 2018. That's $8 billion per day. And 4.5 million deaths are attributable to global warming. And it's really, I mean, $2.9 trillion a year is what it's costing the world at the moment. 
and we have to give attention to that. And there's great opportunities for business here. We're talking to entrepreneurs, which is yeah, fantastic. Absolutely. You know, because these are the guys, you know, we're the guys who create this future because we take a risk and we, and we say, we know, we, we explain to our families that, listen, you're not going to see that much of us. We're going to be busy. We're, we're determined and we're, we're just going to make this thing happen. And that's what I love. I really relish the opportunity of talking to, uh, to a bunch of entrepreneurs, you know. My time in Ireland gave me the, the strength, the courage, and the kind of excitement with which to build my company. I do believe that there are a lot of synergy, synergies between um, Irish and uh, Indian entrepreneurs because both countries are very focused on technology. Whether it's information technology, life technology, biotechnology, pharmaceutical technology or med technology. I think there are a lot of opportunities to basically partner and co-develop and co-innovate. But the key is to have two or three flagship issues that are kind of Ireland's signature issues. When you're small, it's even more important to do that, but that was even important for me uh, in, in representing the host country, the, the richest country in the world, etc. Just choosing your battles, it's intuitive, right? This is also true in our daily lives. And there I would come back to the themes I've mentioned. I think climate, uh, conflict and reconciliation, uh, but again, choosing your battles, maybe just a few countries to really bring that expertise to bear. Um, and peacekeeping, which is in dire need, remains every year in dire need of, of reform. And I think Ireland has, has this broad sweep of history uh, to draw upon. My personal view is that you don't get high performance um, and tag culture on at the end. I think you need to get that bit right first. And okay. so culture being the right people in the organization, um, the right values, the right behaviors, a sense of identity, uh, a, a sense of shared ownership that we're all in this together. Um, good people um, who are all aligned to, to, a, to a cause. Um, and when I came to Leinster, I very much found that, you know, obviously a lot of homegrown players, um, a lot of very good people, values that were very similarly, similar to my own. The, the purpose of the EY Entrepreneur of the Year programme is to drive, facilitate and inspire entrepreneurship. At EY we really believe that entrepreneurs, particularly in a small country, a small open economy like Ireland's, are the only true sustainable driver of value. You know, innovation and creation, the knowledge economy, uh, will be what sets us apart as a country for many, many generations to come in bringing you together as a peer group, in letting the magic happen, perhaps contributing to some of your ambitions and targets with fabulous speakers that we've had over the last couple of days. Uh, we hope that we're playing our role uh, in helping you build uh, a better working world.